Has this ever happened to you? I built the city on Minecraft, but it's dull, boring, and has no life. Then have no fear, because in this video, I'm going to show you 16 details you can add to your Minecraft city to spice it up. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matt, and welcome to the channel all about building in Minecraft. Before we jump into it, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm to help this channel grow. Also, a large portion of viewers are not subscribed, so if you'd consider it, it would make my day. It's free, and you can always unsubscribe later. Alright, you're watching some dramatic movie based in New York City. The main character gets upset about something and has to go blow off some steam. Where is it that they always go? They go to the waterfront. Waterfronts and waterfront walkways are designed to be calm places to relax and de-stress. It's been scientifically proven that being near a body of water improves your quality of life and subsequently your mood. If you separate the city from the water with trees and some slight elevation changes, it'll go a long way. Trees are also great for your mental health. There's something about humans that makes us want to bring nature into our living spaces. Now, depending on the theme and set location of your city, you may only want certain types of trees. In the city of Andea, we have palm trees in the south and it transitions into pine trees in the north. You may also notice that another very popular video game does the same thing. Variation in the size and type of trees can make your city so much better. Using smaller, closer together trees along a roadway will help your citizens feel at home. Bigger, sprawling trees are better for more open areas where you want to give people shade or block a line of sight. You can also blend medium and tall trees along the side of skyscrapers to give your towers a sense of scale. Road marking should always be carefully planned. India relies mostly on a North American style, but obviously you can use any style you like as long as it is consistent. I made an entire video about this if you want more details. You can have a lot of different type of bus stops. You can have small ones, you can have big ones, you can also have giant ones, or you could just have a little sign on the side of a telephone pole. Do you like being stuck in traffic all the time? Because I don't. Let's add some dedicated bus and bike lanes. Dedicated lanes makes it so public transportation can be much faster and more efficient. When you add bike lanes and integrate them into your intersections, it'll make it a lot more appealing for people to bike everywhere rather than drive. Along with functionality, it'll add some complexity to make your city more appealing to explore. Alright, well if you're going to have bus and bike lanes, you might as well go all out and add some LRT lines that shift between the ground level, bridges, and indented into the ground. If you plan your transit well, you can have LRT stations connected to subway stations connected to major bus stops. The LRT is typically quick stops like a subway and has frequent stations. If you really want to up your city game, consider adding bike and walking paths. I live in Ottawa and I'm very thankful that the urban planners made them a priority. If you have enough space that you can separate trails for walking and biking so that the people walking don't get hit by a bike, people will really appreciate that. When you're making these, you can include a lot of slopes and a lot of fancy curves to keep it interesting. I promise you, if you have these along a waterfront, the people who live in your city are going to love you. Elevation changes are easily one of the most important aspects of keeping a city interesting. These elevation changes can just be natural hills, or you can add artificial ones with stairs and ramps in urban areas. The reason why we find these elevation changes so interesting is because it blocks your line of sight. Tell me, what's around this corner? I know I have your attention because I know you're curious. You know what? Let's go around the corner. There you go. But look, there's another corner. And there's something down there. I just know it. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. This is what great urban planning does. It keeps you wanting to go around that corner, because around that corner is a new place to explore. Cities aren't all just buildings. It would feel pretty cramped if it was. Urban planners will take plots of land in an urban area and turn it into a park. You could just keep it as grass and a few trees, but to make it interesting, they will design urban parks to work with the landscape by using elevation changes. 
A lot of urban parks are a balance of concrete and greenery to maintain the aesthetic of the surrounding area. Some things you typically find in urban parks are wide staircases, ramps, modern art, statues, and some greenery confined to an area. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll know that I'm an avid fan of point towers. A point tower basically just means that you have a high rise that's connected to a base that spreads outwards. The tower bases will typically have row homes, shops, grocery stores, or in some cases, smaller offices. I really like the idea of adding row homes to a base because there's a lot of people that want to live near a downtown core but don't want to live in a high rise. Markets are great. Who doesn't love a cozy farmer's market on a Sunday morning? If you can surround your market with subtle elevation changes and greenery, it'll go a long way. All right, your city can't be perfect. You gotta add a little bit of grit. And one way to do that is to add back alleys. In these alleys, you can add some graffiti, dumpsters, or maybe a sketchy car or two. The more alleys you have, the more complex your city becomes. This will make it so that people will want to explore it even more. On-street parking is a great way to add a dynamic feel to your city. You should use these parking spaces in high pedestrian areas. This means around shops, restaurants, and other first floor stores. As your city's urban planner, you need money. You get your money through taxes. If you add on-street parking in these areas, people will spend more money and those businesses will pay you more in taxes. Just be careful not to have these parking spaces too close to intersections and be sure to mark them with a parking sign. All right, we can't stand all the time. Benches let your citizens rest and lets them enjoy the view. Studies have shown that in open spaces, people would rather sit around the outside of the space so they can fully see and understand what's going on. You can place seating in the middle of the open space as long as there is some sort of barrier behind it. I do not own a car. I'm lucky enough to live in a place where I'm relatively close to everything. I walk, I bike, and I take transit everywhere. When I walk, it's usually on a sidewalk. I don't know about everybody else, but sometimes I get sick of seeing cars everywhere. The escape from this is pedestrian streets. These are just streets where there are no vehicles. Europe is very familiar with this concept, but there's only a handful of examples in North America. Pedestrian streets allow people to take a deep breath and not have to deal with the constant noises of cars. HVAC systems are a super easy way to spice up your skyline. There's a lot of different designs, and honestly, if you really want to, you can just place them randomly on your rooftops. On the top of skyscrapers, you should have larger parapets that should be somewhere between half a floor and maybe up to about two floors. On top of HVAC equipment, you can also add an arm that extends out over the side of the skyscraper for window cleaning. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and maybe you could even consider subscribing. My name is Matt, and thanks for watching.